back in London and all the blossoms has come out. It's springtime. Spring time in Marylebone. Sophia is Hi. back. How long is it, Sophia, since you've done my hair? A long time. <laughs> it, uh, just look at me, everybody. I mean, you film me, Sophia. <laughs> Let me film you. Have you. To turn it round. Oh, I'm filming myself. <laughs> you can see me through there. Oh, that's better. I I Sorry, I'm not back. very good at this. So, with, a lot's happened to Sophia. No, that's very close. A lot, very close. A lot has happened to Sophia and I. And I'm just going to move back at your hair. Talking about. My mum, we're talking about Sophia, we're talking about Sophia's mum, and um, everybody Sophia. Every time I go to the hairdresser, they all go, where's Sophia? She's very busy, but we've got some news as to where you can now find her. She's here to do this because I'm filming tomorrow, a special job um, in Maribone, and I just said, please, please, you've got to come on your day off. It's her day off. She is at the Dorchester, not every day. So we're gonna give you all the details afterwards, but just tell me about yourself. You've been busy, haven't you? Oh, too busy. <laughs> Say what, tell everyone what you said to me about my extensions. I would like to put a few extensions through the bit, front bit, just to give a bit more volume here, because I, because we've gone for a different look now, a bit longer, we do need to add a bit more volume, because she's got thick hair everywhere else. It just needs to be a bit more here, because as you can see, it's a little gap here. I just wanted to fill it a little bit, but Joe's not. I won't. I won't have want to go for extensions. I just don't want to. I don't want anything fake anymore. You know, I she hardly wear. Natural. I want to be naturally looking like this, um, but I just don't want. I don't. I hardly wear makeup. I know I look awful, but it's been a bit of, no, I've had a bit of a time. But um, Sophia's not that keen on my flicky up. It looks great with the flicky, but she needs shape to it. It's too flat, then flicky. It's a bit too dated, I think, personally. <laughs> I can't <But> be dated. <laughs> Please, I can't be dated. I'm a middle-aged minx. But it's just, the flicky looks great, but it just needs a bit of body just here. That's so, it. That's what we're going to do. So uh, the next shot, she will have done it. Look, everybody. My bounce is back. She's done an amazing job. Just tell everyone what you did, because you haven't taken much off. We're still growing it, No, we're we? still growing it, about another inch to get a bit longer, just to have a bit of movement, a bit of flickiness, but just making sure there's a lot more bounce there now, so it's not too flat. Just like giving that natural body to the hair, because she's got great hair, Joe. So you just want to embrace it. So I've lost my bounce, everybody. Sophia, do you mind filming the back yes, for everyone? Yes, Thank you. So there we go. And you see, I just, I love it like this. I love the centre parting. I love the flicky out bits. Nadine Baggett will love this. And she has done the most, she's come and repaired my hair, everybody. She's back. Um, Sophia and I have had a lot happening in our lives, but um, she now is somewhere, She's somewhere all of you can enjoy her doing her hair. So, Sophia is at the Dorchester. I know that sounds very, very grand, and it is grand, but they have a hair salon downstairs. And um, Sophia is now working from the Dorchester. She's here today with me because she's doing this as a favour, because she knows I've been through quite a lot, and also I'm filming tomorrow, so short notice. But, Sophia, tell everybody when you're at the Dorchester. So every Sunday and Monday. Oh, you do a Sunday? Yeah, I do a Sunday. So not many salons are open on a Sunday. No. And then if you want me through the week, if you just call me or send me email, I can get you booked in either in the day, through the week, or at the evening. So I'm going to leave that, her phone number, and her email address, and you can do that, and then you can go to the Dorchester, and you can have the best colourist and stylist out there, everybody. I know a lot of you will actually already go to her. Um, but yeah, so she's fixed everything. I've been through a little bit of a journey with my hair. You can see the memories. Oh, I can. There. Yeah, oh, whilst yeah, I'm doing that. So oh, but this is art, everybody. So you can see the true shape. They can see all the shape there now. There is shape. Oh, I love it. And I'm filming tomorrow, so we've done quite a lot because I'll be sleeping on it, but we'll keep the bounce. 
Thank you. You're welcome. And you didn't bring your daughter. I should include a clip of your daughter, your name. Oh, but next she, time. She, she steals the show whenever she comes here. But bring her next time. I'll bring her next time. Say goodbye. Bye. 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 I think you'll agree, Sophia has certainly managed to get the choppy, flicky look that I wanted. In fact, let's go to the mirror and you can see it better there. This is exactly what I wanted. Bit stuck out, choppy, centre parting, but length. And I love it. I absolutely love it. And you can probably see the back if I turn round. You can see the back. Hopefully you can see the back. Difficult doing it with this camera. Um, and check out the suit. This is a deep, they call it Peony from Theory. Another Theory suit. These Theory suits, I cannot tell you how much wear I get out of them. They are so useful. And for tiny people like me, they're really lovely. For people of average height, they're linear. And they're just the answer basically to um, what to wear especially in the spring or when it's not actually that warm but you've got a smart occasion so I am back doing a job today I'm filming today in Marylebone and this is my first job back since Mutti died um, and I'm also going to be doing my radio show this week for the first, I can't wait to get back on air and, you know, I got to get back out there. I have to earn a living. I feel a bit like I'm walking on air, but I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. And work is therapy. It's not just an income, it is therapy. And I'm very lucky that I've got it. Um, and I've got a lot of work lined up, actually. So I don't, you know, Mutti would have hated me turning down work. Um, she would have done. She would have just said, I said it last week. Gosh, by the way, thank you all of the comments last week. Oh, how do people cope without the support I have? I have all of your support. It's like I'm being carried through all this and I'm fine. I'm going to film. The only, my only worry today is it's pouring with rain and we're filming on Marylebone High Street, but we will achieve it. We are filming for International Women's Day, which is on March the 6th, and I've got to go out there with my new hair into the wet with just a brolly. Anything for vanity. Anything for vanity. This is, uh, this is Rich. Does anyone recognise him anyway? Leave in the comments. Um, this is Steph. And we are just preparing. We are preparing to film for International Women's Day, and we, we're having to always, always in England. You can never set anything in stone because it's raining. We're just sorting out what internals, what externals. Here's here's the, the mystery map. Hey guys. <laughs> Mystery is the clue. Who do you think that is? Answers below. Here's Rich trying to. We've had quite a day, guys, haven't we? Yeah. The girls. Yeah. Uh, we have had quite a day. Filming in the rain is always extra difficult. You know, if it was sunny, we'd be buzzing around, but we've got umbrellas and coats and... Anyway, we are in the basement of this fantastic Mexican restaurant. Oh, look, there's banquettes. Look at this, I love a banquette. Oh, look at this. So, look, you can book parties down here. I had no idea this was here, everyone, and I think I know Marylebone like that. So look, this is under the pavements. That's yeah, the pavement. It's really not, it? Wonderful. I love, yeah. yes. I love it here. Love it. I'm having a great day. This is a real You're pick me up. Do you know? I can't be sad. I'm loving it. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I'm out there filming, and I'm just having a nice day. Oh, what a day. More cards. 
raining outside, but we did it. We got our filming done, most of it done. And it was um, good for me to work, really good for me to work. How lucky am I? I have a job that, um, it's just, it's wonderful. I have a job where I meet these amazing people, work with amazing people, and it's the best therapy. Um, and yeah, I, I've got so many cards here, plus cards at my mum's that my brother's got. Look at my lovely tulips from my neighbour who left them on my doorstep. Beautiful tulips from Amsterdam. And um, yeah, let me just sit down. Gosh, what a morning. So um, that was a real, um, that was a, it, whenever we film, I've just thrown everything down on the floor. Sorry, everybody. Um, I'm often asked, oh dear, sorry everybody, I'll try and sort this out better. That might be better. There. Um, <clears throat> I am off, so yes, I've also this morning interviewed Trisha Guild, who, um, these are Trisha Guild. This is Trisha Guild from the Designers Guild. I interviewed her this morning. It's basically a film for International Women's Day. Um, and I did it last year and I've done it this year and I, uh, it's for Marylebone Village and I love doing it. Um, and I'm ever so flattered they ask. Um, so yeah, we've had a great morning, but it's been pouring with rain. So it's for a start, my hair, but my hair has somehow, Sophia was right, if you just fill it full of product and just keep doing this, it somehow has a style. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, Yes, when you film in weather like this, pouring rain, it's really difficult, but we did it. And now the light's starting to go. And now I'm gonna drive back down to see my brother um, at my mum's, um, because there's a lot to sort out. And then I shall come back up and do my radio shows. But something arrived in the post yesterday and I wanted to wait to open it with you. So, hold on there. I'm just going to get it. <clears throat> so this arrived and I, I wanted to open it with you because I'm so excited and I haven't even told her yet. There is, if you go back on my vlogs, or if you look at the retreats I go to in Spain, my yoga teacher is Claire Connolly. And she is a yoga teacher and she comes on my radio show and um, gives us a meditation. When I was on the radio show in the afternoon, every day during COVID, we would have a meditation from Claire Connolly. And she is remarkable, very young, so spiritual, so connected and a brilliant yoga teacher. But she said to me just before Christmas, Joe, a publisher approached me and she said, I'm bringing out a book on meditation. This arrived yesterday. Claire, if you're watching, how proud am I? Meditations for a powerful you, simple life changing practices uh, to help you relax, recharge and reconnect. Look at that. Claire Connolly, your own book with a fantastic publisher. Well done, Claire. And I'm looking at this for the first time with all of you. I'm so proud of her, Claire Connolly. If you have meditated in the past, you will know how it, it is transformative and it does literally recharge your batteries. If you've never meditated before, why don't you give this a go because this has taken her ages to write and um, while she's been writing it she's been um, teaching at the same time so I don't know how she did it um, but uh, there are meditations for balancing the nervous system I love the illustrations alternate nostril breathing my mother always practiced alternate uh, nostril breathing uh, a morning ritual. So a meditation, Claire usually says, 
if you're going to meditate, try and do it when you wake up because the body is quite relaxed and she went, it's a really good way to start your day. So your very first morning meditation, she makes it easy for you. Um, a meditation to help you overcome grief. I will be looking at that when I get back home to my mum's place. Um, gosh, how interesting that it should fall open on that page. Anyway, um, beautifully illustrated. And um, there's also an audio version. I think, well, I'm, I'm pretty well sure because Claire is a voiceover artist anyway. She will have done her own audio version. So um, there's an audio version as well that goes with it. I'm going to leave the link below. And um, as I say, if you go back to some of my um, vlogs that I filmed during COVID when I was practicing yoga in this room, they were led by Claire. So well done, great introduction to meditation. And if you already meditate, it's always good to bring in new meditations. Well done, Claire, you clever thing. And also, did you know, Claire, it was going to match my outfit? Right, so, uh, gosh, what a morning. I am now going to change into my comfies and I'm going to head back to Sussex, check up on my brother and sort out funeral arrangements, which is taking much longer than I thought. Good morning everybody. It is Thursday morning and it's very, very early. I haven't even turned all the lights on. I've been lying in bed thinking about things that happened yesterday that I didn't actually tell you about and has shot a clip from yesterday's filming when we were filming for International Women's Day in Marylebone. A clip that I didn't show you because I wanted to explain to you what the clip was about. I've just, I've literally, I've been in bed thinking about it. It's, what is it? I think it's half past five in the morning. And I just thought, right, I'm going to do it now. Just to talk about what an extraordinary time I am going through at the moment. I, all the cards, the flowers, the messages from all of you. If you, if you just watched this vlog and you've never watched me before, or you've missed a couple of vlogs, my beautiful, lovely, inspiring mother, Mutti, passed away last week. And I have had all this support, I've had so much support from all of you, that it's just carrying me through. We haven't had the funeral yet. It's just carrying me through everything. And I'm fine, honestly, I'm fine. And I don't know how people cope who don't have support like you. But the extraordinary nature of my job gives me experiences that are mind-blowing and this is one that happened yesterday and that's just why I wanted to stop and insert this into this week's video because I'm quite uh, at the moment I'm, I'm very aware of, of um, sensitivity of my emotions, other people's, things that have happened to me since Mutti died that are so wonderfully warm and just things that have happened and I can't go into them but I'm just going to tell you one now so I'm, wa I'm waffling on and so let me just tell you what happened yesterday and it'll, it, it'll just describe what a fantastic life I have because I meet so many of you in so many circumstances and you connect with me, you connect with each other and and this is a this is an example. So yesterday I and you will have seen previously, I filmed down Marylebone High Street for International Women's Day and we were filming and interviewing founders of companies that are massively successful companies founded by women and um, are around locally in this area because we will be doing a panel discussion in March. So we were filming these women, doing interviews with these women. There is a grocery store that I frequent in Marylebone that I film in a lot because I go and film what I'm eating. And, and for the first time, I'd met the proprietor, the founder, 
Jenny. I'd never met her before and we were about to interview her in Bailey and Sage. As we're about to interview her, one of you, as so often happens when I'm out about, and especially in Maribone, one of you came up to talk to me just as we we're about to film this interview. And this was an amazing woman called Vinnie Carla Agnello. Vinnie Carla Agnello. She came up to me, tiny, my height with her friend, over from Manhattan. And I'm gonna play that clip and then I'm gonna tell you who she was, because I didn't know until after we'd stopped filming her. So let me just play the clip. It's very excited, it's very full on. I was filming an interview, she came up to me in Bailey and Sage. Watch this. Hi Joe, I'm here because you talk about this on your on your channel. I just love you. I can't believe I'm meeting you. I can't believe that he's actually filming you saying this. This is, this is the owner. Oh, this is the nice owner. You're she here. Talks about I know. The thing is, back me up on this. What's your name? It's, yeah. My name is Vinnie Carla. It's a long Vinnie. name. Vinnie. Yeah. Um, this is where I do my shopping. Yeah. And I come in here for my milk. I come in here for literally everything. Um, and it's because it's probably the best place in Malibu to food shop. It truly is. I knew it? about it. I, I said, wait, this is it. I said, <laughs> and then I told my friend I'm like this is where Joe's shops and then I walk in and there you are and you must go I'm always in here the staff will know me so they all know um but you must go downstairs because there's a homeware department downstairs so yeah and you get flowers and everything so nice to meet so you nice to meet and you now too. we're going to interview this give lovely lady Jenny we will give Myrtle she's fast so you know what they're like they just snore oh my god <laughs> so nice to meet you and you thanks for coming up to me thank you wow Rich, have you got that on I got camera? Every single second he's, got, of he's got all of that on camera. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? So let me tell you who she was, and we only discovered after I turned this camera off and I was chatting to her. She is the wife of Lieutenant Joseph Agnello, who was the first responder one of the first responder firemen on 9-11 to the Twin Towers and he died on 9-11 and she was left a widow with two toddlers and she herself is a nurse and she told me this with with no you know, I, we were chatting, it took me a while before she told me her story of why she was over she'd come over to um, England from Manhattan and she specifically wanted to to walk where I walked in Marylebone to shop where I shopped I mean all that she has gone through and this joy and and excitement over meeting me a youtuber I mean I I was blown away and I literally couldn't get it out of my head, I can't get it out of my head. And I just thought, I'm going to explain to you her story because all you can see in that clip is this excitement and love of being in London. And that, that was her life. That's what she's done. She's brought up two small boys and I had, I just, Vinnie, if you are watching, I hope you're watching, you say you watch every week. I truly think you're amazing and I know you've written about it google her um and my god your husband must be so proud of you because you you nursed your whole career and you looked after your two boys and you've got two dogs you were telling me so that is that's just something that happened to me this week and I just thought women are amazing I mean what better example for International Women's Day than a woman like that coming up to another woman, showing enthusiasm for another woman when she's gone through all of that in life. And stood next to us is the founder of this company and she's had to work so hard to stay where she is. I'm sorry, sounds really indulgent, but it just blew me away and I had to put it on here. So anyway, now I must get dressed. Ah, oh, 
amazing, amazing people. You are amazing people and I am so lucky and this is very indulgent but I hope you understand why I wanted to include it. Right, I'm going down to Sussex now. And here we are, back at work, back doing my show. Nice to be back, nice to be back. So it's Friday everybody and we are, Anna Webb and myself are going in to do the radio show, obviously. We are indeed, we're doing a couple of pre-records actually. Yeah, we will, we'll go in and do those in a moment. Um, we're just in a hotel opposite and we thought we'd just sneak into the loo to chat to you. Um, just to sort of say hello and also because Anna, and Anna's been through everything that I'm being, I'm going through, Anna's been through. Um, and, and I hope I'd supported you when you lost your mum. Of course you did, Joe. don't be silly. I mean, I remember I came in actually and did the show when we were on in the daytime, um, the, the same day of the morning that she had passed. It helps, doesn't it? It so helped too. I wasn't sure if I could and I remember you presented me with a big, big, big bucket of peanut butter <laughs> and um, as a way to get through. But it was just so brilliant because I had run out of peanut butter and it was the best gift. <laughs> oh! Always, always to do with um, food or our, we have very idiosyncratic eating habits, Anna and I. Mm. God, that was the peanut butter stage when we just ate nothing but peanut butter. Yeah, that you know followed, the brand that yeah, comes the, in a big bucket. Yeah. Not but flowers. You, it was the best gift. It was practical, thoughtful, something I needed, something I liked. And it was just thoughtful because that's what proper friends do. They know the thoughtful gifts. Yeah. We're being lit overhead. We must it's look horrendous. Awful. We look awful. Yeah. I look awful because I, I, Anna's doesn't look awful because she's. No, I always look awful. No, you don't. Anna. Anna's been um, on Jeremy Vine this week, so yes. she's had a busy week. <laughs> um, anyway, by the time this goes out, we would have been on air. Go to BBC Sounds, Barking at the Moon. Late Night Joe is at 11 o'clock. I am back, everybody. We're going to be there. We're also going to be at Crafts. We'll give you all those details. But I just wanted to say, all of you, the support that you've given me and my friends, and I don't know how people do it without. And I know that this vlog has been a bit erratic. Um, at one point, I was almost hysterical on Monday. I was like, I'm fine, and I was so happy, and mm. people were like staring at me. Then I plummeted. Well, this is it, and, and it will be a roller coaster, Joe, you know, and there will be sudden triggers that you're not expecting, and yeah. the, the most extraordinary, silly things might set you off. But this is all part of it, you know, grief is um, a very individual process, but it's, it's hard, it's hard, Joe. Yeah. And you're being amazing. Well, I've got work, thank God I've got work. I know, exactly. I mean, I mean, yeah, if I haven't got work, I don't know what I'd do, especially because it's raining all the time, which you, I hate. No, the weather isn't great. <laughs> anyway, my thanks to my friend and all of you and all my other friends who are not on here. And um, guess what? What? Dave the Cabby has sent, <laughs> I haven't even seen it yet, he sent it straight to Philippe. <laughs> Uh, a little video of him in LA. He hasn't got out of bed, I don't think. Really? You see, I think he's a bit of a dark horse in a good way. Oh, in a great way. In a great way. I know so little about him, and everyone keeps saying, why don't you go to LA with Dave the Cabby? That would be can, a laugh. Can, he never gets up, and he's just watching The Real Housewives. Anyway, we're gonna put the clip here. Um, thank you to all of you. Thanks for all the messages, all the support. And thanks for subscribing. And don't forget, you can subscribe if you're watching on telly. Um, mm. We will leave details on how you can do it. And I will see you next week on Sunday. Have a great week. And from Anna and myself, Dave the Cabbie, everybody who's been on this vlog, goodbye. Say goodbye, Anna. Goodbye. And goodbye. woof woof. Woof woof. Hi, Joe. Greetings from Santa Monica Beach. And uh, <laughs> behind me, uh, Malibu in the yonder distance. Beverly Hills last time, this time Malibu. Um, beautiful sunny day and I'll be back soon. So hopefully, uh, well, I'll see you next week. And uh, hope all's well with you and uh, the minx and the minxettes. The minxers and the minxettes. Bye.